you are about to be impacted by the word from the pulpit of God's Chambers Global Ministries. Listen and be blessed. So we just quickly get into it this morning, the second session. We're looking forward to the final session tomorrow morning when we have the Sunday morning service. Um, so like I said, I'm going to talk about the training of a savior. Yesterday night, we looked at the prototype savior, and that was a high point in the realm of the spirit. Let me just encourage everyone and anyone, members of the body of Christ, to listen to that message again. That was a message for the body. It wasn't just for this conference, and we trust God for that level of utterance. I'm just going to key into that also. The first thing I want to say as I introduce the training of a savior is that our Lord Jesus Christ is our perfect example. That means when it comes to anything, you can learn from others. And there's nothing wrong in learning from others. You can learn from David. You can learn from Moses. You can even learn from contemporary examples. Great men of God, Smith, Wigusual, Kennedy again, and you know, what have you. And those things are good. Because we were also encouraged by scripture to follow those who through faith and patience have inherited the promises. But when it comes to the doctrine grade uh, training, uh, doctrine grade, uh, what we can call prototype and what we must pattern our lives after, the only perfect example we have is the Lord himself. And that's why I want to look into, what we want to look into this morning is how was he trained and raised as a savior? Because see, that same syllabus, whether you like it or not, you must go through it again. Whatever the Lord did, he didn't just do. Uh, because if, if his purpose was just to die, I mean, he would have just gone to the cross to die. Anyway, but he lived. And one of the reasons why he lived before he died, and even after he rose from the dead, he still spent 40 days here, was because he's just trying to communicate to us the fact that I also lived, I, I left you an example on how to live. I didn't just come to die. Yes, one of the purposes for my coming was to die as a ransom for many, but I also lived, I was raised in a particular way. And because it's our perfect example, whenever we are looking at the Lord, whatever you find there is the perfect scenario. For instance, I began to say yesterday, I think I touched a bit on that also, that the first time you saw the Lord manifesting ever in scripture was when he was 12. That means whatever he did at 12, all things being equal, that is what a 12 year old ought to be doing. Because it's a perfect example. But you see that today, what the Lord did at 12, many 12 year olds today cannot even come close. As a matter of fact, some in their 30, uh, 30s are still struggling to line up with what the Lord did when he was 12. Because how many people today can go on a 72 hour retreat by themselves without telling their parents, the parents did not know what he was doing. That means he was beginning to communicate to us that at age 12, this, this is the level of access and this is the level of spiritual capital that you command and that you can access in the scheme of things. And by the time he was 30, just like I said yesterday, by the time you are 30, as far as God is concerned, you cannot blame anybody again for the outcome of your life. See, all these idea of ancestral causes, when people are 30, when you are less than 30, you, we can deliver you from ancestral causes. But once you become 30, you are the ancestor. That was why, you see, the Lord could have come at 70. The reason why he began to manifest this thing at 30 is that by the time you are 30, you cannot hold anybody responsible again for the outcome of your life. So that means as far as the Lord is concerned, anything destiny is a 12, 13 window. It's from the time you are 12 and the time you are 30. Anything you cannot construct or articulate within that space allotted, you're already a late comer. That doesn't mean there won't be people who will find their purposes in their 40s. There will be, but you are late already. As far as the perfect example is concerned, but God is also a God of mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's, that's a good thing about God. I think I don't meet the perfect scenario. There are other systems of advantage here and there that can also make up 
for your being late. So look at your neighbor this morning. I hope you are not a late comer. And I want to appreciate the brother that taught this morning before, I mean, he's touched on a lot of things I'm going to touch on. Now let's get into it. So I just said that to tell us that what we want to look at today is how, <laughs> because that's another thing, Pastor, when people felt Jesus just came here and started manifesting. He was trained. He was raised. How, how did he become the Christ? He wasn't, I mean, he wasn't just born and, and one day he was just Christ. I mean, that would have been abracadabra. And, and I personally will find it going to relate to that. If I cannot at least see here and there things that he did that made him to optimize and maximize the grace of God upon his life. And that's what we want to look at today, that when God wants to start raising you as a savior, which, of course, the first speaker already explained, we are not saying you are going to become Jesus, but we are trying to say, Obadiah 121, that uh, saviors must arise from Mount Zion to join the mountain of Edom. And that is what would make the kingdom to become. So we're looking at a kingdom agenda, like that scripture. Look at it. It said, then saviors shall come to where? To Mount Zion. So when we are teaching anything that has got to do with savior, it's a Zion great reality. Mm. It is for those who understand the meaning of Zion. And um, let me say it again, just like I said yesterday when I started, as I'm about to start now. Anything I say here is not against any minister, it's not against any ministry, it's between you and I, it's not against your apostle, your prophet, your pastor, because I don't know what they preach. So trust me that I have never, in all the years of my life and ministry, stood behind the pulpit to attack anybody or to try to hide to attack what anybody is saying. I don't do that. It's not my style. And if there's a coincidence somewhere, it's not intended. So just take it that this guy is just speaking as he's inspired by the Spirit of God and he doesn't have anybody at the back of his mind. Do we agree? Thank you very much. All right, so let's start. (laughs) That has become important now because of... um, Amen. Luke 2.25, and I want to appreciate Dr. Akinkwe, good to see you, and all the other men of God in the house. So just like Pastor Taiwo said, I was still looking at him yesterday when he was with um, Daddy Bishop Oedepo, and uh, to seeing him again here this morning. Amazing, amazing stuff. And I think he's becoming one of the closest guys to Bishop now. I mean, always in and out. Praise God forevermore. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. I know this is a word church, and that's why, just like I did yesterday, I won't read everything because of time. Pastor Taiwo, Dr. Akinguero, the first thing in the training of the Lord was that ever before he was born, God raised two people to anchor the project. Where's the brother that taught now? Just like what he was saying. Can God trust you at this level? That means one of the things that is going to make us to understand that you are part of this project Christ is that there is something you are responsible for on the face of the earth. Nobody knew. Everybody just told Joseph, just toasted Mary, and Mary agreed. People did not know that there were people who were backing up that project in the place of prayer. So for the first time, God is revealing to us the sponsors of the project Christ, and they were not known. Look at, look at the manner of man that can be a savior at that level. So when, when Joseph was saying, I'm going to put away Mary, <laughs> And, and wanted to distort the project. Why do you think Joseph changed his mind? You think it was only because Gabriel appeared? Somebody was praying. Yeah. And the Bible began to tell us about this man. The Bible says, number one, don't, just like it was described, if you are going to be a savior, you must be just. You must be just. Look, we have so many people in church today who are not just. That means when you look at you, how do you process things? How do you, I mean, for instance now, 
let's look at a situation and something happens here now in, in, in God's chamber. You've been here for 10 years. Pastor Ty was being your pastor. Let's even say something went wrong. Maybe Pastor Ty was said something wrong. And the next thing is that you are offended. You are not coming to church again. I mean, when God looks at people and when God looks at how people treat people, you realize that one of the things we've seen in the body of Christ that is creating tension and hostility is that people are not just. People forget. They will forget. And as a pastor, learn to always make adjustments for that. That no matter how much you pour yourself into people, there will still be people who are attacking, who will leave you, who will rubbish you. And, and, and by the time you are getting offended over that, it's going to affect you. So you just have to understand that not, not everyone is just. People have, people, ah, people forget, people forget, people forget, people forget. People forget. Especially, I, I'm so happy. Look at this brother too. That's why, what's your name, please? Pastor Femi. When he was teaching, he remembered the guy that raised him. Where's that pastor he was talking about? He acknowledged the pastor. Where's the pastor? Look at that. Look, that is a just man. Some people will have platform. And you, the people that raised you, when you were nobody, are seated somewhere there. You are here, and you are now celebrating the current guys. And you forget yeah, 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 yeah. that you had foundations. <laughs> and that is why in my spiritual lineage, there is no one that has contributed to my spiritual growth who is not in the forefront of things. As God started promoting us, even those that were there, we brought them. Because you see, the truth about the matter is this. We are, we, within our history, we, we are products of so many people. We cannot come into limelight and we are now acknowledging those who are in the limelight and we forget those who are laboring day and night. And that was why the day Jesus was to be presented, these people showed up. Number two, the Bible says it was devout. <laughs> Only very few people in the church are devout. And what does that mean? It's as simple as having a time when you pray. Did you hear Pastor Femi talking about it also? They used to have vigils. Many people are not devout again. And when we talk about being devout, I mean, nobody's even saying pray one hour or pray five hours. You see, I know there are teachings everywhere now, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm not even saying, don't let us even start from there. We're saying, as far as devotion is concerned, simple things like, do you have a time when you pray? And you find out that once you become devoted to a particular prayer regime, you realize that you pray more. Because if your prayer time and you are devout and every morning is 5 a.m., you realize that even if you are tired, once it's 5 a.m., grace is supplied. Yes. But all, all these people just pray absently. I mean, pray absently. So have a time when you pray. Number two, have a place where you pray. And when I say have a place, I don't mean go to a mountain or go to the hill. If you have a privilege to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. You go to the mountain to pray. But it could also be a, a corner of your room. And every time you want to pray, go to that corner. You realize again that by the time you start practicing devotion, even if you don't feel like praying, if you stand in that corner, you realize that you start praying. And maybe for some people also, what will also help is that have people you pray with. Did you see that, Vijay? Have a company of people. And because you don't want to look like Satan. So when you have a company of people that you pray with and they say, we pray five o'clock every Saturday, even if you don't feel like praying. Because if you don't show up, they will say, this guy is backsliding. <laughs> even if you don't feel like you, you show up. What are you practicing? You are practicing devotion. But I just said all that to now get to where I'm really going. If you are going to be a savior, please look at me. Don't make me here. You need to understand, and that came up yesterday also when DDK was teaching, what is the program of God for your life? So if you, meet, if, if you happen to meet Simeon, and say, brother Simeon, this guy, why are you alive? Why are you here? Why, why has God kept you? Guess what? Simeon will tell you first time, is that I'm only alive for one reason. The program of God for my life is called the consolation of Israel. What was he waiting for? Look at it. Waiting for what? 
how many people today can well articulate the program of God for their lives in one sentence like this. I said, what do you live for? That means Simeon said, the reason why I'm alive is that I'm, I'm not the guy who, who's got this responsibility under God that I'm waiting for. The reason why I'm fasting, the reason why I'm praying, the reason why I'm just, is that there's a program of God I've discovered that has been handed over to me. And the meaning of that program is the consolation of Israel. So tap your neighbor. Say, what are you waiting for? He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Because what is going to keep you in the days we live in is understanding God's purpose for you. Understanding God's program for you. What God is doing with you possibly is not what is popular today. I'm thank God for all that is popular today. But what, see, we're, we're just, because this is just a brother. But just like he said, it will amaze you that this was the only guy on earth at the time God could trust with Project Christ. And God said, the, re, the way I'm going to communicate that project to you, Simeon, is that there is something that is coming. It's called the consolation of Israel. That means that is the overarching purpose of God for you. Come into that project and you realize that you won't have to look for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will start working with you. Because the next thing you see is that the Holy Spirit was upon him. That means these are the days that the Holy Spirit is seeking for those who understand God's purpose for them. And the moment you start working in the purposes of God for you, you will realize that there is a dimension of the ministry of the Spirit that opens up to you. And look at the next statement. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death. <laughs> there are people praying against death. There are people, by the reason of the fact that they've discovered God's purpose for them, death is avoiding them. Did you see that? There's a level of there's a level you get to in getting into the agenda of God for your life that death will leave you alone. Because now that this guy will not see death is a revelation of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit said, now that you have touched something, one of the things that will never happen to you, Simeon, this, thing you have, this project you've gotten into, until you get to the logical conclusion, you will not see death. So we now began to see that the reason why people die is that they see death. <laughs> so there's a death free zone in God purpose can keep you alive yeah. especially when it gets to a level because for this guy to die we mean Christ will not come mm. that means once your purpose is Christ great it's a Zion great kind of expression ah, God, you are, you're going to become a VIP in the program of God that even death will say we cannot harass this guy because what this guy is handling if we, if we attack this guy Something of kingdom great is going to go down. Are you there? <laughs> now, I was telling them in church the other day. I said, when, when I'm traveling, one of the reasons why I don't buy and I don't lose is because, look, I've understood, I've seen how presidents travel. Imagine if our president wants to travel, he's, he's going to check the tire of the plane, whether the tire is okay. Or he's saying, open the engine of the plane for me. Because he's president, right? There are departments in the presidency taking care of all that. When the president is traveling, all he does is just enter into the aircraft. And I'm like, Lord, I'm going to Nigeria, I'm going to Europe, wherever I'm going, I'm not going on the fully on my own. And it's not my department to be checking my own safety. There is a department in God that is responsible for my safety. Except that department, and the reason why they will refuse to, to, to take my safety serious if, if I'm going on my own. Because who goes to warfare at his own charge? So this man, death left him alone. It's been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that will not see 
death before they had seen the Lord Christ. And look at the next thing. So he came by the Spirit. Pastor Tabo, look at, look at that graduation. From the revelation of the Spirit, then to walking by the Spirit. He came by the Spirit. That time there was no GSM. There was no newspaper. How did he know? That was the day Christ would be presented. Oh, after this conference, you need to learn to come by the Spirit into things. There are things on the face of the earth. The reason why, I mean, look, I can give you examples upon examples. Of, let me give you one from, from one, another story from Pastor Bakari. So when he was serving as a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God under Pastor Adeboe, one of the conventions, Baba called him out, Baba prayed for him. And Baba said, look, God has raised you, he's going to bless you, you are going to get into your millions. You're going to become a millionaire. So he got married. I mean, before he got married, weeks into his marriage, true life story, he was sacked in his law firm. <laughs> just sat. They just gave him, imagine weeks you were waiting, you were praying for a wedding, they just gave him a letter, uh, you know, and they gave him money in lieu of sack and all that. And he went back to the camp to see Baba Deboy and he said, sir, you said God is going to promote me. This is not promotion. This is demotion. They just sat me. And Baba started laughing. He said, don't worry, it's promotion. And he said he was in his house. I'm, I'm teaching you how to come into things about the Spirit. He was in his house, minding his business. After all, there was no work again. And the Holy Spirit said, dress up and go to Lagos Country Club. And he said, dress up like a lawyer. And he said he wanted to dress up before. He said, the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 dress up like a lawyer. And he went into Lagos Country Club. And I said, no, no, it was a co teller, I beg your pardon. As he was entering, he just saw a white man fighting a black man. And the Holy Spirit said, go, get involved in that fight. And he just quickly went down and had to stop them. He said, stop fighting. And, and the black man said, who are you? Who are you? He said, I'm the lawyer of the white man. He just said, said I'm his lawyer. <laughs> and that's why eventually they were able to resolve the issue and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, by the time he was going to get, that time they used to have fax. A company from wherever just sent him a fax and they said, Thank you for saving our head off. He didn't even know the guy was a GMT or whatever from an imminent embarrassment. So as a result of that, we want to pay for your intervention as a lawyer. And they wire PM, millions. And they said, not only are we doing that, we are now retaining you as our lawyer for all our operations. When you learn to come into things by the spirit. And he will always tell you that story. That was how he became a millionaire at the age of 30. And not just in Naira, in pounds, in dollars, when Naira was Naira. Simple business. Was you know what happened to this guy? Came by the spring to the temple. I on at Pastor Taiwo, that the day they were dedicating Jesus, you were coming in. So for many of us, what is missing in the equation of this thing we're talking about is you're being sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. A lot of people are too full of themselves that when the Holy Spirit is leading, you know, it requires that level of sensitivity to know that just like what DDK was also sharing yesterday, do this, do that, sow this seed, and bam, and two weeks after, the man was gone. He came by the Spirit into the temple. Pastor, well, you know what pains me about all this is that this was before Pentecost. People were already being led this way. So, so what is our own Pentecost advantage? Uh. If before Pentecost, somebody was already getting a revelation. It was, so that means the question of death was sorted by Simeon forever. Because it's not dying. It was not because it will avoid legacy by no expressway. It's not dying. It's a revelation of the spirit. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was revealed. How I wish things about us came out of the revelation of the Spirit and on the strength of that revelation, we are now being led again. He came by the Spirit to the temple when the parent brought in the child Jesus to do for him. I went to God's of the Lord and look at what he did. Next verse. <laughs> he took him up. <laughs> you know the meaning of that? How many of us are mothers here? You are doing dedication. You are here, Pastor Tyler. 
father is wearing Agbada and Moria, Mo, mother with Gele. And suddenly a stranger just walks in and comes to the state and grabs your baby. What will you do? <laughs> For the first time, the guy said, you think this baby is yours? Hey. <laughs> you think this baby is yours? You think it's just your love story that produced this? He's now beginning to tell Joseph and Mary, let me show you the workings of God. Ah, yeah. Behind the scene. Ah, we did this together. Ah. Look at how he, he took him up and blessed God. And Mary and Joseph could not say, where is this stranger? Where is Anna, baby? And look at what he said. He said, Lord, now I can die. Ah, yeah. Oh, you don't understand. <laughs> Saviors. This is the guy that now determined when he would die. He said, Lord, you are now letting your servant depart in peace and it's according to your word. And why? This is the reason why I'm alive. Look at the next verse. Oh, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Move on. Which are prepared before the face of all peoples. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Pastor Fermi, everybody, can you recognize what God is doing in his infancy? I'm beginning to talk like this when he doesn't look like it. Because this was just a baby. And this guy said, I have seen the salvation. This is the light. This is the mistake people make, Pastor Taiwo. When ministries are not growing and they are struggling, you begin to, and you not begin to see everybody blowing. You begin to despise what God has given you. Because it's not looking like it now. You begin to tell yourself, maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. And you forget that you were led by the Spirit. Look, look at conviction. This guy said, this is the light. I like to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. And look at what happened next. Even the parents marveled because they did not have this kind of revelation. So he took the man that was walking behind the scene to even know the value of the baby they were carrying more than the parents. And move on. Simeon blessed them. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, by this level, father and mother were already on their knees. Because when they saw superior conviction, <laughs> superior manifestation of spiritual capital, so Simeon now said, I'm taking over the service. He blessed them. And now said to Mary, <laughs> he said, this child that you are carrying, that you think is just a baby, is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Look at that. He swore to pass through your own soul also, and the thought of many hearts may be revealed. This is the job profile of every pastor. That's why I'm so happy this morning that we release somebody into the ministry. The ability to see the destinies of people in their infancy and to be there to speak the word over it when, when it, it doesn't look like it. Because anybody can claim father and son when you are in the limelight. But, but you see, if we're going to bat saviors, this is the prototype. This is a... This is a very good example to look at people. And that's why when you see Pastor Taiwo allowing people, just like Pastor Femi and others, to come and share, this is what is happening. That we can see what your destiny is. He said, this baby is destined. That means he said, once this baby begin to manifest, some people will fall and some people will rise. <laughs> it's automatic. And what he was trying to... Recover from all this. Another functionary showed up. Look at the next verse. <laughs> now there was one Anna. So for the first time, they're now beginning to see the people that really anchored it. How she also came, we don't know. One Anna, look at that, a prophetess. That's what Pastor Femi said. For Simeon, it was more, a, a bit of limelight. There are those, your assignment is a secret mission. Especially in the days when everybody wants to be out there, then you cannot be an Anna. Because for an Anna, 84 years, nobody must even know what you are doing. Aye. I mean, the, the Bible says a prophetess. Pastor Tai, show me one prophecy this woman gave. Aye. Because when we are beginning to talk about the prophetic, a lot of people are now beginning to think the only aspect to the prophetic is limelight, prophesying, calling people out. There are prophets who are prophetic intercessors, like Anna. 
That means your job as a prophetess is to be interceding in the secret. And until a day like this, nobody must even know that for the last 84 years of your life, you have been investing in praying day and night, never departed from the temple, and yet not known. If we are to be today, first day in the temple, you will see selfie. They said today is the first day of 84 years. You will pass on before the 84 years because it's supposed to be a secret mission. On Sunday in church in, in, in UK, I just commissioned a group of eight ladies because I went for a meeting and, and, and there was a word that came and I told them one of the things that I said, this group must never be known. I said, the day it is known, that is the end of this group. Daughter of any of the tribe of Asher, who knew that? She was of a great age and lived with her husband for seven years from virginity. Just like what you were saying, there are some people, the level of the assignment will cost you your marriage. That means for some people who are gonna carry this type of grace, marriage is even out of the picture. Because one of the things we have overrated is marriage. As though if you don't marry, then, uh, oh. Come on, preach it. Preach it. Yes, sir. So let's say it. There are those who will not marry for the sake of the kingdom. Yeah. There are those who will marry for the sake of the kingdom. Is it, whoever can receive it. So we're not giving any formula. But we're saying that if your own assignment in the kingdom, just like he said, will require you not marrying, so be it. And don't feel robbed. Because with this level of grace, she was only married for seven years. <laughs> and look at what happened. Bible says she did not depart from the temple. Uh, Pastor Akin, how can you marry and not depart from the temple? So I, I'm not going to be cooking for your husband <laughs> or for your children. So you could see why some assignment must requires that level of consecration. Because for this woman, you, a married woman, will, imagine they are saying, don't depart from God's temple day and night. Uh, Abba, you, if, we, if you have an husband, even us, we, 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 we will depart you. We, we, we will say go home. Because you are also violating another scripture by being an irresponsible wife and mother. But, but God knows that there are some assignments requiring this level of consecration. Because what you are praying for is Christ. This project cannot go wrong. This is showing us the criticality of some assignments. You see, when you get to this level, your assignment is so critical that, that, that even God himself doesn't care the price you have to pay because it's a critical assignment. You see, there's some assignment, you can just say, okay, I want to, I want to, but there are some, even the Lord will say, the level of consecration that is required here is extreme. So make no mistake when the Lord begins to deal with you. As well as some of us. And for some of us, it's not even married. For some of you, it could be food. It could be fashion. For some of you, this level of consecration could be you must go off social media. I just met a dear friend now who told me, and he's very popular on social media. He said, God just told him, because I just saw that he disappeared. He said, that is the level of consecration the Lord dealt with me about concerning the next phase of my assignment. He said, the Lord said, get off social media. It's a distraction for you. It can be anything. And that's why we're, we're, we're not saying it has to be this or that, but we're saying if you're going to be part of this company and you are wise and discerning, even in the times we live in, there's a level of consecration God is going to demand of you that is extreme and is rare. And it doesn't have to do with marriage. It could be food. It could be how you treat your opposite sex. It could be, it could be anything. It could be where you live. It could be how you should live. But some, some things Pastor Taiwo said now, it could be, as a senior minister of the church, God can tell you, you must not be the one preaching every Sunday. Let others do it and sit there and take notes. Look at, serve God with fastings and prayers day and night. How can somebody be fasting and praying for 84 years? Every day, day and night. That means this woman never broke her fast one day. They look at, I mean, we're reading the Bible. Serve God. That's why he used plural. Fastings and prayers. How? Day 
and night. That was why she never departed. So if, if, if you have gone to the temple, everybody will just see one woman in one corner, just like we used to do in you are in those days at the chapel, just praying, just praying, just praying, just praying. And this woman was anchoring something important for God. And look at that. Look at it. Move on. And coming in in that instance, how did she come in also? <laughs> she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those. That means what she was anchoring in her own corner is another program called Redemption in Israel. Redemption in Jerusalem. Simeon was anchoring the consolation of Israel. This woman was anchoring. So what are you anchoring? Write it down. What is the program of God that God has committed into your... For Abraham, that program was called justification of the Gentiles by faith. Let's look at that. I will come back into this because this is very, very important. Galatians 3. Oh, praise God. Please, I'm going to request for a bit more time <laughs> because I could see that after all, it's my friend's conference. <laughs> so you two go to your friend's conference. <laughs> ah, praise God forevermore. The, the truth is I've not even started the message. But we'll, we'll cut it short in righteousness. We'll continue in the morning tomorrow. Hallelujah. Let's read from verse number eight. And the scripture, look at that. For seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham before and saying in you, all the nations shall be blessed. How did Abraham become Abraham? Because he also discovered a particular program of God. The name of that program is justification of the Gentiles by faith. And, and whenever a program of God is set, scripture foresees. That means the only gospel scripture will be preaching to you from that time you discover the program of God for your life is the gospel according to that program. That means scripture is not just what you see on the pages of the Bible. Scripture is a living thing, capable of foresight. That means, Bible says, and the scripture foreseen. That means in 2024, there is a way scripture is set. There is something scripture is foreseen. And, and the moment your life lines up with the overarching program of God that scripture is destined to support by time, you realize that something will happen to you. So that means, look at, and, 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 and we now begin to discover another very important aspect of scripture. The biggest preacher is scripture. It's not a human being. Because look at scripture, did what? Preached the gospel. Scripture did what? Preached the gospel unto Abraham. Because Abraham was the only person that understood that what God is doing now is called justification of the... That means God was looking for a Gentile to justif justify by faith. That means God was looking for a Gentile to step onto the faith lane. And the moment Abraham responded to that summon, he became the greatest man of the era. Then the next thing in the training of Christ. You know my prayer, as we're reading Simeon and Anna, is that all of us who are seated here have a Simeon and a Hannah in our corner somewhere there. Because you cannot fulfill purpose alone. There, 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 at least, according to this scripture, there should be two people on the heart who are looking out for you. Who are praying for you. The bigger story is there is also from this conference become a Simeon and an Anna to someone. Even if there's nobody doing this for you, can you do this for someone? That without them knowing, it's not limelight, it's not doing selfie together. You are praying for them. And you are praying for them because their destiny and their purpose and their relative importance to the cause of God has been revealed to you. And you are supporting them. You are praying for them. They don't even know. But a day they will know. 
just like the day of the presentation, you just realize that once they become what God has destined them to become, somehow they will remember you without even knowing that it is the harvest of the seed you've sown that, that is coming back to you. You see, all this social media socialization we are doing, it's okay. I mean, people who don't really like themselves, who don't hold up each other in the place of prayer, they will just sing conferences and we are hugging and we are taking pictures together and there is no exchange. There's no interaction. And that is why the body of Christ is the way it is now. So we're looking for solid offline relationships. I mean, that is not social media based and, and that people don't even know that we connect until such a time. So it is not every connection we take to social media. And that's why when some fathers call me in the body that you do not even know, see what you are doing and they keep on saying, at least I have like five, six of them who are called from time. I mean, senior minister, fathers in the body of Christ. And they're like, we're praying for you. We see what you are doing. We're praying for you. Look to me. And, and at times I go to see some of them, but you will never see any picture anywhere. I'm not saying it's wrong to post picture, but I'm just saying, look, that should not be the basis of what we're talking about. There, there are secret missions in God. There are some things you, you jeopardize them once you bring them to limelight. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Serious interactions. Like Anna. 84 years, nobody knew. So that means the project Jesus did not start the day Mary met Joseph. It started 83 years before that time. But somebody for some, <laughs> I mean, what year are we now? Can you remove 84 years from 24? What year would that be? 1940. 19? Yes. Imagine since 1940, somebody has been praying for you. Because at times we don't do the real math. We won't really know what is going down here. Since 1940, somebody has been praying for you. Day and night, fasting. If Christ did not come to the scene without two solid people anchoring it. How do you think you can survive as an individual without having, and, and this is why the body is weak at times. We don't have this kind of support system again. Mm. At times our support system is now when people come into limelight, we now want to take their crown. Mm. Mm. That's when we want to identify with them. And people are smart. They know once you come into limelight, those who are trying to identify with you at that level are not really the support system. Because there must be. And that's why we're saying today, be a Simeon to someone. Be an Anna to someone. Because it's needed. That is why we're looking at the perfect scenario. The next thing, let me just do the next and we'll take, up, take it up tomorrow. The next significant thing. As these people program Jesus for destiny, they started assuming the status of destiny. And, and, and the first thing it did was that by the time they were going to the, um, what do you call it, the feast in Jerusalem, he went and Bible said Jesus stayed back. The training of the Christ. Now the training starts. The first manifestation of Christ that we saw in scripture, was in for three days, sitting in the midst of teachers. And, and let's, let's read that place. This is very, very important. Because why do we need to read it? So that I could just wrap it up on that. I know because of time, we won't be able to finish this, but it's fine. And when he was about 12 years old, verse 42, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. Look at what happened. And when they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances, but they did not find him, and they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. And of course, they found him. Look at what, where they found him. You want to start?
start training as savior, verse 46, is your syllabus. Somebody say syllabus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Pastor Dele is about to describe your syllabus. Number one, your syllabus is to sit. Number two, to listen. And number three, to ask questions. How does the Lord get into stuff? They met him what? Sitting. Number two, listening. Number three, asking questions. If you are going to be strong, if you are going to be great, if you are going to manifest purpose, you need to learn to sit. You need to learn to listen. You need to learn to ask questions. He was doing what? He knew one day he would be the teacher. What did he do to prepare for his teaching ministry? He sat, he listened, and he asked questions from teachers. Pastor Taiwan, this was the son of God. You could see that he was very deliberate about all that he did. Today, I mean, if, if you tell someone now that after God must have revealed your ministry to you, the first thing you need to do is not to do a meeting, it's to sit. Mm. <laughs> I mean, some people are going to fight you. Because, you see, we've been trained that once God reveals to you that it's time to go into ministry, the next thing you are looking for is who is going to help you to design your hand be. Sit. Look at your neighbor, say, sit down. Because a missionary is not a mission in a hurry. And one of the things we are dealing with in the body of Christ today is that too many ill prepared people are behind the pulpit yeah. who did not take time to sit before they stood. Yeah. Pastor Aki, for three days, a 12 year old, you don't know the meaning of that, three days. 72 hours, a 12 year old. That is what even some people cannot do in their 40s. Two, two, three days of with the word. Three days. And look at how the law started. And that is another thing we started talking about yesterday. It did not start by chanting, it did not start by doing 10 hours of prayer. As good as those things are, they cannot be the foundation of ministry. The foundation of ministry is solid teaching. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because if you are taught the word before you start praying, you will pray accurately. Yes, yes. If you get into prayer before sitting with the word, you will pray dangerous prayers. Because this is a perfect example. This is the Lord. Don't forget in the same Jerusalem, there will be people chanting. There will be people praying. He did not go after those ones because he knew if you are going to lay solid foundation, Expose yourself firstly to teachings in the direction of your purpose. And you do that sitting. Number two, listening. Listening. Ah, when I was in University of Ibadan, by the time I was leaving the campus, and the, some scholarship members helped me to come and pack my things to leave the campus. To, to go back to Lagos then before I went to serve in Calabar. You know how many tapes they packed out of my room? Thank God there were witnesses. When they counted all the tapes, you know, at that time it was tapes. They counted 5,000, 5,000 tapes. That, those were the tapes I acquired. The books, they could not even finish counting. Because what, Pastor Tai was also remember, because it was part of that also. What, what was it that we were doing on campus? We were sitting. We were listening. We were listening. We were listening. Going to, from conference to conference, acquiring tapes, bearing books. List, and, and I look at a lot of young people who are coming out today. And I'm like, look, YouTube is good. Facebook is good. But there are some things you can't get on Facebook and on YouTube. So a young man came to meet me the other time in the UK and he said, Hey, I want to start my ministry. I've been watching you. I want you to, and I said, have you read everything Can I take you wrote about life and ministry? He said, no. So I've never read any Can I take him book. I said, you are not ready for ministry. 
I said, before I can even talk to you, I said, go and read everything, can I take? At least read like 15. After you have read, come back again. And I will now do an exam for you. And I said, make sure you, one of the ones you read is following God's plan for your life. Yeah. Then number three was asking questions. Dr. Aki, you can imagine how interesting would that class be? That the word himself said, excuse me, sir. What do you mean about that? You mean that's what Deuteronomy is all about? The Lord. So that means if you sit and you listen, you ask, you have questions. That means you cannot agree with everything hook, line, and sinker. That is why you have questions. You see, anywhere you are, that you are not allowed to ask questions. That everything that is being said is finer. It's not a place of growth. Yeah. Yeah. And having questions doesn't mean you are rebellious. That's it. But it's just that what they are now saying, by the grace of God, your own calling, your own grace, is now contextualizing it in another way that will now compel you to say, but you told us one, two, three. Can I also include six? That is why any ministry where they don't do question and answer session, and, and for those of us who are pastors, let's be deliberate. You see, we come every Sunday and we assume people understand what we are saying. Until you do your first Q&A, you realize that all that you taught for one month, they did not even get it at all. <laughs> and where does that now leave you? You now start doing what is called repetitive teaching. Because you see, that is why you, this Sunday, part number one, and the people are looking at you and they're like, well, praise God, hallelujah, amen. You are all the amen brothers. <laughs> But by time, and, and if, you see, as a wise pastor, if they don't ask you questions, you ask them questions. Or you get to church on a Sunday morning without telling the brother. You just say, brother, go and give a recap of Sunday's teaching. It will amaze you that people will come up here and start singing every song, obey for you. Without you. <laughs> and you're like, did I even measure obey in my church? <laughs> and that's where... Because a lot of pastors assume that this Sunday, Sunday thing is what is doing the job. Oh, and that is why somebody said it yesterday, discipleship is what we are all still going to go back to. Because Christ is now beginning to show us how you disciple people. So he had to go through that himself. Because guess what? That was how also he ended. This was how he started. This was also how he ended. When the Lord rose from the dead, he only spent 40 extra days here. Somebody say amen. I might say 40 days. 40 days. By that time, it was 33 and a half years. So that was 21 and a half years after this one, right? So when it was 12, they did three days. But when it was 33 and a half, it became 40 days. Oh, you're not getting me. <laughs> you see the syllabus for 12 years. The syllabus for 12 years. Just separate yourself from daddy and mommy for three days. Sit, listen, and ask questions. But the difference between upper room and this one was that that last one, he was now the teacher. Before, he sat in the midst of teachers. Oh, so that means in ministry, you don't have any authority to teach anyone if you have not been taught. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So for the last episode, he was now the teacher. And it's the same syllabus. It's just I said of three days. This was now 40 days. Pastor said, well, you know, we, we gloss over it, we say 40 days. 40 days is six weeks. You don't understand. Pastor Femi, they were coming every day for six weeks. And Jesus only taught one topic. It's called kingdom. The Bible says for 40 days, he was only teaching them things. Part. That means day one, kingdom part number one, kingdom. See, this idea of trying to teach many things, different things every Sunday. I don't know where we got it from. <laughs> For 40 days. Day, day 35, kingdom part 35. Day 36. For 40 days. For 40 days. That means the Lord is saying, you are the first set of ministers. I must leave this syllabus with you so that eternally ministers will know that the first way to begin ministry is to sit. And it's to listen. That was the first Bible school in the New Testament. The Lord himself was a lecturer. And if you are going to make it as a minister, you must assess that syllabus again and repeat it. 
because he has left that syllabus for us eternally. That when it comes to ministry training, there are some things you cannot rush. This was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If it was possible to, to collapse that syllabus, the Lord will have collapsed it to, to six days. But even the Lord him saying, at my level of life, as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to deliver an accurate curriculum to train the first set of ministers that will be first beneficiary of the day of Pentecost, it, it, it will take six weeks. Because this was no longer the Jesus of Nazareth who was teaching. The one that was teaching and could walk through walls. And even at that level, he didn't say, let me compress it. He said, in as much as we want to compress it, it cannot take us less than 40 days. And even in that one, there was Q&A. They didn't notice. Because at the end of the day, he gave them, and Peter was the first person to ask questions. And I thought Jesus would be angry at the question Peter asked. Because here was he teaching them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And Peter said, excuse me, sir. Who is going to be the next president of Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Jesus looked at him. You know the question of Peter? He said, will you at this time restore again the kingdom unto Israel? And Jesus said, I thought he would say, oh, so all that we've been teaching, your own is just, is OB or Tinobu. <laughs> But, but look at Jesus to show us that Q&A is very, very important. He wasn't angry. He said, well, it's not for you to know the times and season that the Father has put under his own power. That should not be your primary occupation. He said, but this, should, this is your primary occupation. You shall receive power. Power is coming. Empowerment is coming. He said, my overarching purpose is that I need to use 40 days to prepare you for one day. Ah. That means it takes 40 to 1 ratio. 40 on the side of the word, one on the side of the move of the spirit. So it took 40 days of preparation for one day of Pentecost. <laughs> That's ratio 40 to one. Word to the spirit. That means the Lord is saying only those who are kingdom minded can optimize the ministry of the spirit. So it took him 40 days of teaching on things pertaining to the kingdom to prepare them for one day. Encounter with the Holy Spirit. Imagine they were not rooted in the word. And let me show you how much they were rooted in the word, and I close. Closing in two minutes now. After the 40 days, the Holy Spirit was going to come on day 50, right? At the end of the 40 days, the Lord ascended. You now see Peter and the rest of them practicing what they learned within the 40 days. Look at it. Oh, I needed to also say this. After all this said and done, let me just say this and we'll wrap it up with that one. Please can you get on the keyboard because this is very, very important. Pastor Femi, Pastor DME, everybody, when the Lord, please don't miss me here, the especially young people, and I'm happy we have a lot of young people here. After the Lord got exposed to the teachers in Jerusalem, he still went home to be subject to his parents. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You cannot run your life on YouTube apostles and prophets at the expense of looking down on your, the pastors of your local churches. Because you will be missing an essential element in the training of the Lord that is called carpenterization. <laughs> there are things no one can say to you other than your, the pastor of your local church it does not matter who you are following on YouTube because it was only Mary that was able to keep these things in her heart there are things about you there are fights about you only given to the pastors of your local church because we are living at a time now that where people are getting more and more committed to minister somewhere there, you know, and, and, and it's not looking like, in fact, somebody was preaching it the other day, that God is no longer using churches, that God is not raising fellowships. And I'm like, what I read in my Bible is I will build my church. I've never read I will build my fellowship. So people, it's not getting to a point now people are despising pastors of local churches. 
Because the mind says that they are not as anointed as one prophet we are following somewhere. They don't give word of knowledge like one prophet. They don't minister the anointing. See, that's why as Jesus was getting there in Jerusalem, the parent took, and the Bible says he went back home and he was subject to them. A minister on YouTube must never have more authority over you than your local pastor. Yes, if you begin to experience that and you think you're experiencing revival, you are breaking the order in God. He went back home. Can they give us that verse? He went back home. Give us that verse. And he became subject to them. And that was how he started learning carpentry. Because at times, Pastor Taiwo, this is the deception. You do not think what you are doing at home, ushering protocol and all these things, we, we, we don't think those things are important. We think what is important is that somebody is coming to town and all of us are going there. Mm. Mm. And the level of commitment, the level of offering, you will never give to your local church. You are giving on YouTube. And you think this is something. It doesn't work like that, sir. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and he was subject to them. They might not be speaking the language of teachers in Jerusalem, but they are critical to your emergence. And if you miss this, there's an essential part of your life you are missing. Bless God for everyone God is raising who are doing para church ministries, who are doing stuff, but they can never be replacement for the local church. Somebody wants to do something that you are volunteering and you have never volunteered in your local church. What kind of, what, kind, what do you think you are doing? You think that's the new type of Christianity? Or the kind of honor you cannot give to your local pastor you want to give to somebody because they have followership on YouTube, learn from Jesus. He said, learn of me. I'm meek and lonely. You always find rest for your souls. Learn. And in those 18 years, he was a carpenter. What does that also show us? That the fact that you work in a secular employment is not a reason why you are not a savior. That you don't need to be a full-time minister to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Because everything Jesus taught as a preacher, he learned as a carpenter. Yeah. Oh yeah, you didn't get it. That means as Jesus was filing the wood, he was meditating on Deuteronomy. That means nine to five is not the reason why you are backsliding. As a matter of fact, God is not looking for lazy people that the son of God who saved us had to go into carpentry shed. How do you explain that? Because if we were to be some of us, the day you met those guys in Jerusalem, you will stay there forever. You know what Jesus would have ended up becoming? Another rabbi. It will never become the Christ. Because in order to be the Christ, God is saying part of your training is also to undo tools, undo materials, be subject, deadline, timeline. Somebody's going to collect the table at five. The table must be ready. And that's why when he started preaching, did you see anybody saying you are preaching now? How about the table we gave you that you did not deliver? <laughs> oh, as he was preaching, somebody said, look at the dining table you did for us. It's broken. You are now preaching. What are you preaching? <laughs> so that office where you are, you think it's not part of your training? So suddenly you come to church, you are spiritual. But at work, Every part of God is God. So if you are a savior, even if you walk in a bank, you are a savior there. Just talk to us about Joseph. But this idea that you come to church and you are singing there, and when you get to work, there is no song. We come to your office, we ask about you, but we say that one. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why they were angry was that the carpenter was becoming a preacher. They said, is this not the, not one of those, this was, was the, And they must have done some deals with people. Like the donkey people. Possibly he made Danny table for them and they wanted to pay him. He said, no. Pay, they will come. He said, did they pay, they will come. I'm going to send somebody. And this is the password. They will say, the Lord has a need of it. This donkey is paid. <laughs> I'm not saying it is so. You were not there. You cannot disprove it. I wasn't there. I cannot prove it. So, I mean, we are both fine. 
<laughs> or the upper room. Did you read your Bible that they will take you to a large upper room furnished? Does the word furnished come across to you? That possibly the Lord furnished it. And he said, don't pay. He said, but a day will come and we have dinner there. That will be paid. He said, that upper room furnished. He was excelling in the use of tools. That's why when you see somebody like Dr. Kimbello, myself, DDK, and others who are also doing things in the social sector, in the economic sector, in the academic sector, that is still part of the training. Because the Son of God was a carpenter for 18 years. How about his first set of disciples? Have you noticed that he did not call any Levite? The Lord did not call, he did not go to the temple to call anyone chanting Psalms. He called people that were professionals. He was as they were casting a net into the sea, he called them. That means he's saying, I'm not looking for people who don't have anything to do. That the busy, busier you are, the better you are a for the kingdom. So don't lose the fact that you are busy as an excuse not to have God. It's an anomaly in the training of saviors. And don't use that that the only reason why you are not praying is because you are working nine to five. The Lord worked nine to five for 18 years. Because by the time he got to the wilderness of temptation, there was no gap between carpentry and ministry. It's not that he went on sabbatical. So when he was quoting Deuteronomy, it's because he knew Deuteronomy all along as he was making ready the dining table for the Akipa loose. It was like the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I know, I know something. He, those things were in him. So when the devil came and he said, if you are the son of God, ah, he said, I've meditated and determined me back to back. It is written. And he started quoting from Deuteronomy. That means as a carpenter, I knew Deuteronomy. And have you noticed his parables? They have social economics framework. He was, as he was working as a carpenter, he was building the farmers. I was like, what these guys are doing, that's the kingdom. As they are going to sow, as they take five and make it 10, take two and make it four. And the one that buried his own, because I can see many people buried. He said, this is the kingdom. And that is the difference between I'm John the Baptist. John the Baptist's frame of reference was limited. But because Christ worked in the social economic sector, he was able to put dimensions in the social economic sector, in banking, in IT, in oil and gas of his day, which was agrarian. And he was able to say that is the kingdom. So today, if Christ were to be alive today, he would say the kingdom of God is like a man investing into AI. That's why we'll be telling him. Because he was an agrarian, that's why he was using agriculture. But today it's IT. He would have said the kingdom of God is like a man that created cloud and stood on platform and created architecture and secured the architecture with codes and source codes. Those are the things we'll be hearing. <laughs> and finally, how much did they learn? Verse number, what is that? Peter rose up with a number of disciples. Peter began to say, today this scripture needs to have been fulfilled. With the Holy Spirit spoke by the mouth of David concerning Judas. Who was a guide to those who arrested Jesus? He said, this man purchased a field for the reward of iniquity and so on and so forth. What verse is that? Let's just quickly look at that and I can step down. So the greatest blessing you have, sister, is that you are working nine to five. Is a blessing. Because he had to be made exactly like unto his brother. If Christ did not do carpentry, all of us will say, well, the reason why we don't have time to pray is because, we're, look at Dr. Akikpelu. We, we just said that traveling everywhere. And yet this guy is one of the effect, most effective pastors around. He does it. Look, you come tomorrow night. The other day somebody saw me. I was in the University of Leicester delivering a lecture in university because I just did a paper, a conceptual paper about my research. And the university you know, gave me a platform to, to come and present and I was there and somebody was there. The name did not even ring bell. So later, the name began to ring bell and he, he had to tell me, he came after, he was like, you are Pastor Delia Jumagide? I said, yes, I'm Dr. Delia Jumagide. He said, no, you are Pastor Delia Jumagide. I said, I'm Dr. Delia Jumagide. He said, but you are the Pastor Delia that is now the doctor. I said, yeah. He now opened Instagram. He said, you were still the one with that post. He said, hmm, how did you get it? <laughs> And I'm like, carpenterization. Carpenterization. 
three things it will do for you, exert on how to use tools, how to use materials and training. Because to be a carpenter, you need stamina. Now, see, when the Lord now started going from village to village, he built the stamina as a carpenter. Because as a carpenter, you stand there. You are filing, you are sawing. Bicep began to grow. So when he said, let us go into Judea, the way they were walking and going everywhere, he built that stamina as a carpenter. So God is not looking for people who are, show me one person God called in scripture because they were not doing anything. He's always looking for busy people. But you are now using the fact that you are busy as an excuse not to be available. And you don't know that that is what even qualifies you. Let's, let's read that final place. What verse is that? Uh, Pastor Dawood, please. I know I've, I've exceeded my time limit, but please, let me just... Thank you, thank you. At least my friend has said I can go on. So we can as well take it to midnight. <laughs> What verse is that? Is this your multimedia stopping me now? Because I, I don't want to start blaming my own Bible. It's bishopric, let another take. What, what verse is that? Acts 1. Let's get into them. Let's close. Verse 20. Dr. Akimbele, you look at this. Pastor Tyler, everybody. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be made desolate, let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Number one, look at how much they've got, got him. Peter said, the Holy Spirit said it about Judas. Dr. Akibari, they got to a point of 40 day training, they could look at scripture. That Judas being they knew it was about Judas. Read that scripture. Judas was mentioned once. And yet Peter said, this is the Holy Spirit speaking concerning Judas. That is how you are going to know who is your husband. Because you open a scripture and you see his name there. His name is not there. Oh, you are not getting it. That's how you get to know the city you are going into. You open it and you see Abuja. And yet, you won't find Abuja there because there was no Judas mentioned. But 40 days of exposure to the ministry of the world gave them an edge that they can be reading scripture and they know what the Holy Spirit is saying from that scripture. Right? That means scripture. They are there to guide us. But if you just think, it's a just let the salvation be made desolate. But Peter said, come, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled. When the Holy Spirit spoke by the mouth of David. That means there's nothing happening today that the Holy Spirit did not speak by the mouth of someone in scripture for the sake of today. But that's not even the point. The point now is this. When he said, let the salvation be made desolate, let no man dread dread him. That's Psalm 69. Is bishopric let another take? Psalm 109. Men of God, how can Peter take two different portions of the book of Psalms, 40 chapters away, and be able to make sense out of the two of them? That's the level of depth in the study of the word. That means Peter started reading Psalm 69, got an intelligence, and continued to read 70 until he got to 109. And he now saw that Psalm 69. The next intelligence is not even in Psalm 70. That is 40 chapters away in Psalm 109. And that's the level of meditation the early church got to. That he could take two scriptures, 40 chapters apart, and create a spiritual intelligence out of it. And that was how they appointed the next apostle. You want to know the next thing to do? Study scripture. Scripture is there to guide. There are things God will not tell you but verbatim. But as you begin to read scripture, you begin to see coordinates in the realm of the spirit. It becomes your navigation. That was the full, direct import of the 40 days. And when the Holy Spirit came, you see that the guy has read Joel into pieces. As those manifestations were happening, and some people were laughing, Peter stood up. Peter said, this is that which was spoken by prophet Joel. Rise up. I'm going to pray in the spirit this afternoon. Let's pray. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
God speak to us at all. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. That means for this session, the overarching purpose of God is to create in us another depth of hunger and task for the true word of God. As we learn to sit down, as we learn to listen, as we learn to ask questions. As we learn to listen, as we learn to sit down. Come on. As we learn to, to line up with what Simeon did, to line up with what Anna did. Simeon and Anna, Magana broke the bar, being there on that God, and calling purposes for people, and calling destinies for people, doing it away from limelight, away from the applause of men, away from social media. I mean, just being there learning to do things in the secret learning to do secret missions for god secret missions for god in jesus name be encouraged by the fact that it's not everything we do that will make it to Facebook, to Instagram. And these are the days God will begin to de-emphasize some of those things so that quality things can arise offline. People can begin to interact with people without taking selfies with them, without taking pictures with them. And there are serious things going on there until such a day in which the baby is presented in a temple and you'll begin to come by the Spirit into that season. Because what is going to keep you alive is understanding God's program for your life. So after this session, write it down. The way Simeon was able to write it, Consolation of Israel. The way Anna was able to write it, Redemption in Jerusalem. The way Abraham was able to write it, Justification of the Gentiles by faith. What is the overarching purpose of God for you? Write the vision and run with it. God bless you. We trust you have been blessed by this message and we look forward to your testimonies. For more information about God's Chamber Global Ministries, please follow us on all social media platforms and visit our website www.godschamberglobalministries.org or send an email to info at godschamber.org.ng. God bless you.